There's a clear allegory in Nimona from the author's perspective, even if they were, at the time, unaware of their own decision. Indy Stevenson is non-binary. The line between what Nimona is and who Indy Stevenson is, it's the most obvious line to draw. You can call it a queer story or a trans story or an allegory for what it means to be non-binary. All of those things apply. But I also think that it's important to zoom out from that because we've all been labeled. We've all been stereotyped. That's just part of the human experience. I think our fear of what is unfamiliar or desire to label things that we don't understand is a human issue, not just an issue of those in the LGBTQ community. In acknowledging that, it's a way that we should learn to empathize and understand not just that community, but those outside of it as well. That said, my name's Josh Taylor, this is Modern Mouse, and today I'm talking about Nimona, labels, and the importance of why they shouldn't matter. What are you? I'm Nimona. No, no, that's, that's not an answer. The people don't just turn into things. In a year of very excellent animated films, Nimona stands out as not only an interesting story on screen, but also behind the scenes. There are some deep themes to dive into, as well as some movie business magic. It's incredible that this movie even saw the light of day, but that's based on the dedication of the people who made it. And what surprised me most is that it's not a mess. Through all of its delays and cancellation and revival, this film still feels cohesive, and it's unashamed of what it is, from its plot to its animation style to its entire vibe. Not everything meshes completely well, but I do think that it delivers on its theme. Originally pitched as a film in 2015 after Indy Stevenson's webcomic in the early 2010s became a critical success, Blue Sky Animation put a ton of resources into Nimona, developing what would be their most ambitious film to date. It followed up on the animation style changes that were present in the Peanuts movie. And while in production, Disney purchased Fox and Blue Sky Animation just went along with that. However, the merger of these two massive companies came at the worst time and Disney opted to close down Blue Sky during the COVID-19 pandemic, essentially killing Nimona in the process. I'm not going to sit here and say whether or not Disney was right or wrong for shutting down Blue Sky, and a lot of factors do play into that with the pandemic, but that's not what this video is about and I don't really want to have that discussion here. But what's important is that with the shutting down of Blue Sky, there was a possibility of Nimona going away with it as well. But Annapurna Productions picked up the film along with several of the ex-Blue Sky team and created a new animation division of their independent studio in order to finish the movie. With a Netflix distribution deal, the team had the ability to finish a film that had been mostly done before its cancellation, and its release on Netflix has come with a lot of critical praise. I think that's not only because of how technically good the film is with its modern blending of 2D and 3D animation, as well as a really good voice cast, but its themes around labels and stereotypes feels relevant and fresh. Throughout the film, Nimona is consistently getting asked who she is and often that comes from a place of fear. Who is she, Belle? What is she? Whether that's from her friend Ballister Boldheart or from other characters. In not knowing what to label Nimona, people immediately move the character into being a monster. She's the boogeyman because it's easier and faster to understand that than to hear her story and the complexity of her life. Admittedly, none of us have the capacity or time to learn everything about everybody, but we do have the choice to take something that we don't understand and approach it with fear. And Master Yoda taught us everything we need to know about fear. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. You may not be able to relate to questions about being gay or trans or non-binary, but I can guarantee that anybody watching this has been asked questions about what they do for work or what they're going to school for or who they're dating, etc. And all of those things turn into labels about us, whether that's being a doctor or artist or single or married, short or tall, young or old, Republican or Democrat. 
These aren't incorrect labels necessarily, but they make us all one-dimensional, and that can be frustrating. We're three-dimensional, complex beings with our own set of emotions and goals and dreams and fears and lives. Sometimes these labels are harmless, like yeah, I have a barista friend and he said I should try out this new drink, or sometimes they're used against us, like you don't know what you're talking about, you're too young. Not all labels are created equal. Call someone a doctor because you're trying to describe your friend to someone new and they may not necessarily like that label, but likely no harm is going to come from that description. Depending on your intention though, things like calling someone non-binary or Muslim might put them into danger. These aren't incorrect labels per se, but depending on who's using them or how they're using them, they can go from treating somebody one-dimensionally to making them the target of something much worse. We also want to be really aware of terms like racist or sexist. We're looking to focus on behaviors and not people with those types of terms. We're looking for growth and acceptance through humanity rather than bullying. There's a lot of nuance and complexity to all of this, and I could make a 10 hour video just talking about the differences in all of these labels, but in order for us to talk about where they don't come from a place of fear, I think that we need to see people as people, and not as one word descriptors. By Nimona's final act, the fear of her and her fear of those who perceive her with fear leads to the suffering of an entire city full of people, and many likely losing their lives in a giant kaiju-like Godzilla attack from Nimona as well as a choice to kill her at any cost by the director of the city. It would be really easy to say that the director is a bad person and that Nimona is the clear hero here, but again, those would be labels that are too one-dimensional. I do think that the film goes the easy route, but understandably it gives us the happy ending as well. A more complex ending where everyone comes together would seem difficult considering the death and destruction that happens just moments before. But hear me out, the world is not black and white. We are all shades of grey. Our greatest heroes have done things that are wrong, and monstrous people have done good deeds. To satisfy our palates, most stories end up becoming black and white, because they need a proper ending. Certainly some films just end leaving the audience to think more about what they've seen, but in family films that's extremely uncommon or non-existent. I can't really think of a family film that does that per se, but even in stories of black and white there are still lessons to learn in the shades of grey, and that's something that I took away from Nimona. People of all types are three-dimensional, and we need to learn to respect that. At the beginning of the film, the Queen gives Ballister Boldheart an opportunity to be a knight, something that a working class person was never allowed to be. Her choice to look past where he came from shows that she understands that the lower class label shouldn't determine who he is or who he will become. Starting today, any of you should be able to hold the sword if you want it. If you earn it. I've watched this young man earn it many times over. If she thought of him as one-dimensional, there would be no hope for the working class to become anything more than what they are, and her choice to give him that opportunity makes him a symbol of possibility and hope. She's built a kingdom that seems more accepting. Fittingly, the story's setting is futuristic, while its characters are dressed like they're from medieval times. It symbolizes that progress will always happen despite the values and emotions of people. But to advance society is to advance yourself, to learn, and to empathize. If you're looking for an easy solution, there probably isn't one. I get frustrated myself being called a YouTuber or short or whatever, but sometimes I also turn around and label other people. It's so easy to do. I'd be lying to you if I told you that I didn't label people on this very YouTube channel in the past, and that I used my own fear to create an us versus them mentality. Maybe a good start to some of the conversations that we should be having is saying, I know that your values don't necessarily align with mine, but can I talk to you about something? Or I don't fully understand. 
can you tell me more about that? Civilization, like in Nimona, can be advanced and high-tech, but it also needs compassion and understanding to succeed. It's our job to listen to each other, to teach each other, and to grow together. I'm sure like me, you consistently see people pointing fingers, creating narratives with monsters to fear. And it is easy to complain, especially with stereotypes and labels. But Nimona is giving us an answer here, something that's easy in theory, but difficult in execution. Yeah, it's difficult, but the best results often don't come easily. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, Editor Josh here. I'm just finishing up the video on Nimona. If you like the art style in that film, you might also like my video about the art styles in the Spider-Verse movies. Uh, so check that out down below. You can just click on the video right here. And I, I, I'm fading away. I'm, they always make me fade away.